Hi there. So today I'm going to go through how to create a flip card in Storyline. Storyline doesn't come with a built-in functionality of, of having a card do that nice flip animation that you can see in a lot of um, e-learning. Interesting that they don't do it uh, because Rise, the other products that you get with, um, with an Articulate license, uh, had it as one of the, the original interaction so it's kind of one of the first things that it came with but um but it's it's not available in storyline but it's one of those types of interactions that gets asked for a lot you know it's um it's common for instructional designers to like the way um it works it's common for you as an instructional designer that you might want to create a card like this um, so I did a post on LinkedIn just teasing the idea of talking about how to do this. Um, I got some initial responses requesting for a tutorial video of how to do it. So that's what I'll do here now. Um, and I'll, as usual, I'll just go through a couple of accessibility tips um, whilst, I'm, whilst I'm going through this as well. So I'll preview the slide in action. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you select um, each of these buttons, uh, they just do a gentle flip uh, on the page. It's actually quite straightforward uh, how we've done this. So um, the button on the main page here, it is just a button. Uh, so it's got your hover state and a normal state, um, and it just responds as a button with an action where it will show this layer, computer front animation, and that's because uh, this this it's got a computer on the front of it. So I've uh, so I've got a computer button, a mobile button, an exclamation mark button, and a question mark button, just for general icons on these. Is, uh, is how I've designed them. And then each button has got two layers associated to it. So it's got, I've named this computer front animation and computer back animation. <clears throat> okay, so first on the computer front animation, this is the layer that the button triggers. So when user clicks button computer, show layer computer front animation. Computer front is a replication of the button underneath it. But so I copied and pasted this button, but I then removed the state. So it became just an object and um, just a plain object instead. And this object has got a swivel animation. So as you might have assumed, it's it's um, it's using the swivel. We're kind of tricking Storyline um, about the swivel animation. So we slow it down to one second. So it does a really slow swivel. But the problem is with the swivel animation is, is it still wants to do two, I think at least. So it will always do a little spin. So what we have it do is when the timeline reaches 0 0.25 seconds. So that gives it the opportunity to do one of its slow swivels. And when it gets to 0 0.25 seconds, it's gonna bring up the next layer, the computer back layer, and it's gonna hide this layer as well. So it, 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 um, it hides this object which is just a replication of the button that has that swivel on it and then immediately presents this layer here which is computer back which is how i've designed the back of my flip card so it's the the same shape really uh, I, i've designed it in a way where it looks the same as as obviously what's kind of underneath it um you could maybe you know, redesign it slightly, make it a bit bigger so it looks like it's coming forwards and um, and flipping, uh, but nice kind of smooth like where it, it's exactly the same size and such, so it just looks like that card going from one side to the other. And what we've got going on this layer is it's just this trigger that you have to hit, uh, look at here. So as the timeline starts on 
text computer so as it starts on the object which again it's the same object but i've just removed the image from within the state and made it like just a rectangle and i've had just added text to there and i've just called it text computer for my own reference purposes so as the timeline starts on this text computer it jumps to 0 0.75 which is the back end of the one the same one second swivel on this object so it jumps to the back end of the swivel and just does that last that last swivel in that 0 0.25 seconds just like the front computer front it does its first 0.25 second swivel which is the one swivel and then the back does the same but it jumps to the back end of the animation and does that last 0.25 seconds of the flip animation as well and that's how it's able to uh to look like just that one flip because it does the the front end of this object and then the back end of the object outside of it so it looks just like a flip card would do as it's going and it's as simple as that so what three actions all together our first action is on the initial button which uh, is user click this and it shows layer computer front action okay there's two actions on here so then we've got two actions which are layer actions and as timeline reaches 0 0.25 it's going to show computer back and hide this layer and we've got a swivel one second on this same swivel one second on this as well and just one more action so four actions all together which is going to on timeline start of the actual object jumps to 0 0.75 seconds and just does the last 0.25 seconds of the animation on this side and there you go so just those four actions will create that um animated animated look for you so if you're wondering where the um if you don't use like kind of objects within states or, or anything like that that's how i've designed this this button on the bottom here so if i just edit the state in there you'll see that this is actually an icon within the state uh, and it's it's just one of the storyline ones so i just grabbed one of the um the storyline icons from its own from its own library and i just removed that on this one um on this one here so there you go that that's how you um how you do this this um this flip cards trick i guess the last thing that's probably just worth mentioning is when i'm on this layer here i hide the button underneath from the base layer so the button underneath doesn't auto kind of hide where it uh, where it gets rid of it when this one is up here so there's no risk of the button underneath staying on the page whilst it's doing its final flip so that's uh, that's another little indicator i do on there i just was conscious of just double checking that i've talked through everything here and that is all of the kind of all of the considerations to take i believe it is okay yeah so that's how you how you do that flip just give me a shout if you have any troubles um or if you have a go and i'll i'll happily talk it through i guess the other important thing is on my version it's a flip and stay where um all of the layers kind of stay on so to get that look you just need to make sure that it doesn't hide other layers i think that is usually ticked to start off with so just make sure you remove the tick on that and you can do them all at the same time just remove the tick on hide other slide layers if you had that ticked 
as that layer, as the next layer presents, it would hide that one. It would disappear again. Um, which should be fine in some situations. You might want to have it where as you select one of them, the others become unflipped again, uh, and you'd have to reflip them to look perfectly acceptable solution. I just prefer to have them one flip and all. So there you go. That's that's how you create these flip cards in Storyline. So a couple of things to be aware on with accessibility of this. These are, uh, I've made my buttons from just uh, rectangles here and that was just to, to, you get a bit more flexibility on corners and such with shapes. Um, the buttons you kind of, you get either straight edge or it is curved, but then you can't curve it any more or less. So that's why I've made these out of rectangles. Um, mine are just icons in here. You can obviously put text in there if you prefer, you know, text flip one side, text flip the other side. Because mine are icons and they don't have any text in them, I've just given them an alt text. So it reads out to a screen reader, flip card one of four which uh, it'll, yeah, so it'll let the screen reader know, okay, I'm on, I'm on flip card one, uh, and there's, there's three more to go. So we've got flip card two of four, flip card three of four. And this one I've just left, so this is what it looks like normally. So we just go. So that's now got alt text on there. And the the way the flip cards read out to a screen reader. So I've done that if they decide, if, uh, if a learner decides that they want to use these buttons, even though they're using um, a screen reader, it doesn't work the best with a screen reader. You'll get to this text, but because it's just got a bit of a slow animation, uh, your screen reader will probably get to this button before this text has appeared. So you have to go kind of back through the reading order to get to the flip card. Um, you can add like kind of hidden headings uh, to help like kind of navigate back to this text easy enough, um, but it's not the greatest experience. If I was to do this accessibly, I'd do it in a different way, which is the way I've designed here, which is this skip animation button. The, this is my other consideration for uh, for accessibility on this one is that using a button like this it's just going to be a better experience for a screen reader user as, as you selected it just automatically flips all of them and then you can just like easily access the text from your screen reader so what this skip animation button is doing is it's setting a variable called animation off to true and then it's just immediately showing all the four layers. And then on each of those four layers, if animation off is true, it jumps to one second on the timeline. So after the animation is completed, go straight to that one second. Now, something to be conscious of with that. If you're using text on your front flip, they're gonna miss that text when you hit skip animations because it's going to go straight to the back of each of these cards. That's fine. You've just got to be conscious of it. So what I did was I haven't got text on mine, but I've just shown you what you would do um, if you were to have text. So I've just written computer here because that was my computer. Now I've just called it accessible text and it can sit outside of your canvas. So a screen reader will be able to read computer and then flip in Nora. So it will give them the front of the card and then the back of the card. So I've got my focus order here. Let me know if you need to know more about focus order. Um, I, can, I can always talk more about this. So my focus order, it goes to this first, reads out computer, and then it reads out the card. So they've got the context of the front of the card and the context of the back of the card. If your icons are completely decorative and mean nothing for the learning experience, you don't need to do that. As long as they can access the back of the cards, that's absolutely fine. So I wouldn't actually need to do this 
for these in unless the icon was very relevant to, to what was going to be happening on the text behind it or you couldn't understand the context of what was before this and um, without the image at the start <clears throat> but if you had text on that front you absolutely should have it as accessible text on this layer so someone accesses the text before the new text that they're going to on the back of the card so there you go that's that's um that's how you can build these flip cards and a couple of accessibility tips in there as well hope that was useful uh, give me a shout if you need any help with it or if you want to talk for anything else um team emails always in the description and uh, feel free to comment if you've got any thoughts on this but yeah hope it was helpful thanks for watching bye